Okay, I'm just going to start now, and do we, I don't want to close the door, but I think I should use the mic for the sake of the freaking um, camera back there so that it hears me. But everyone can hear me if I don't use it, right? So if I decide to put it down because I hate you. I love it. I can sit. This is great, by the way. I just want to say, LP, Texas, you guys have had a bigger turnout than pretty much any other state I've been to. So, you know, applaud yourselves for that. Um, and and also, I get to sit. So I'm, I'm happy. You guys have made me very happy. Um, also, in uh, where I'm, I live in California, and where, I am, where I'm from, it's 8.30 in the morning, which I don't. I usually go to bed at 8.30 in the morning, not wake up at 8.30 in the morning. So I'm tired and loopy, and it'll be fun. So, yeah. So my talk is on social media and libertarianism, um, and uh, and oh, look, more people. come on in, come on in, yes. See, that's why I waited because you guys would have missed some important information, very important, vital to the survival of the movement. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, first off, um, when I originally talked to LP Texas about speaking, I was originally going to do a talk on. Um, libertine libertarianism, I was going to talk about sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and they were like, can you talk about social media, because you're like a social media person. And I was like, alright, so I had to change this whole talk, like, this is the first time I've given this talk, you are here for the virgin, like, maiden voyage of this talk, and, um, and I want to start with, of course, I am assuming every single person in this room has social media and knows what the fuck it is, right? We're good, like, but is anyone going to go, I don't know what it is, and I'm here to learn. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, you know, Wikipedia says, computer and internet mediated technologies that facilitate the creation and sharing of information, ideas, career interests, and other forms of expression via virtual communities and networks. Um, for the sake of this, I'm going to talk about, Facebook is probably the thing I spend the most time on, so I like to talk about Facebook. Facebook is, is I'm a word person, so, I, you know, Twitter has a limited number of characters, and uh, Instagram is all pictures. So uh, for me, Facebook is where it's at. So that's going to be like primarily the focus of what I talk about, but I can talk about any of these. So I'm, I, given the fact that I have an hour and a half to talk, and I don't think I have an hour and a half of things to say, uh, you can ask me any questions about anything you want afterwards. Um, uh, so we've got Facebook, we've got Twitter, um, Instagram, in case you're all curious, Instagram is where all the kids are. So if you're, if you're curious about uh, how to reach like the just turning 18 demographic, they're on Instagram, they don't like words, they want pictures. Um, it's kind of irritating, but, um, but whatever. Then there's also YouTube. Um, I'm not going to talk a lot about YouTube, I'm more than happy to answer questions about YouTube uh, after my talk, because YouTube has a completely different way of doing things than most other social media, and so, um, like, the, the things I'm going to, I would recommend for optimizing content in, um, on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram might not apply to something like YouTube. But, I will tell you, I work in YouTube. <laughs> Um, so I work for a company that works with YouTube creators and helps them uh, optimize their channels and get more ad revenue. So it's actually something I know a ton about and you'd think I'd do more of a talk on it, but I, I didn't want to for other reasons. The other one I wanted to bring up was Steemit. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Steemit or on Steemit, but it's a crypto-based um, social media platform. I really don't like the user interface yet. It's in beta testing, and as a result, there's not a lot of, there's, there are people on it, there's totally people on it, but most of the people who have joined it are the people who don't mind the fact that the user interface isn't fabulous. And as a result, it's like, it needs, it needs more adoption in order to be something that I'm gonna say, this is totally the way to like reach out to like non-libertarians, because currently the people that are on it are crypto freaks and libertarians, which is great. I love, I love all of those people, but, I feel like social media for me is not just a place for libertarians to talk to other libertarians, but also a place for us to talk to people that aren't libertarians. And so if we hang out on like Steemit, where we only talk amongst ourselves, maybe we come up with some really good ideas and there's some really good opportunities there, um, but it might not necessarily get our ideas out to other people. Um, but the cool thing about Steemit is, is because it's a crypto-based uh, uh, platform, 
Um, by getting involved in it, engaging with content and creating content, you can actually earn Steam at dollars, which are Steam, Steam power, Steam dollars, and you can then convert that into actual like Federal Reserve notes or or other crypto. So that's kind of cool. Um, also, if you find Adam Kokesh in the hallway, he's he's done really well on Steam it, so he can probably. I'm just going to send you to, to him for any questions you have on it. And you're like, Ovens told me you need to tell me all about Steam it. So. Who the fuck is Alvin O'Brien? Why am I talking to you about social media? This is the most narcissistic question I've ever asked, but how many of you follow me on social media or have any, like, know, know me via social media? Okay, gossip, so like, very, that's, that's good. It humbles me. Um, but yeah, I'm Alvin's. I smoke pot. That's, that's really what that picture is about. I also work for a cannabis company in Los Angeles called Light Club, so it's one of my promotional pictures. But um, when it comes to my social media presence, there are people in it, at this conference with a larger social media co uh, presence than me. Because only about 8,000 people follow my personal Facebook page. But I do have a diverse audience of left, right, moderate, and libertarian. Um, if, uh, if, um, I, I regularly post things that get hundreds of comments and tons of engagement with non-libertarians. I'll post a liber you know, something, a libertarian meme, or a libertarian, um, or like, or just something you know, news articles, whatever, something from Reason, and um, and not only will it be like like hugely debated within the comments, but then I'll watch friends of mine on the left and the right share my share articles by Reason or other groups that I'm I'm really surprised to see that they're suddenly going, oh wow, I like that, I like that perspective. This is a libertarian magazine, but I'm still going to share it, um, and. Uh, and so on Facebook, I'm, I'm just somebody who's been really, like, who gets a ton of engagement from people on the left, the right, the center, and libertarians. And also, I've never been zucked, and for any of you who know what that is, um, getting banned from Facebook for something you've posted that someone deemed offensive uh, is a one-day ban, or a three-day ban, or a 30-day ban. I've never actually been. And if, and okay, since none of you follow me on Facebook, um, I post controversial shit all the time. So, like, I post extremely hardcore libertarian, controversial, offensive stuff, and yet I don't get like these these bans that other people get. And I I have my theories about why, which is that I'm always smiling and friendly and nice when I do it, and I'm also not actually intending to offend. Like, I'll totally post. I, I post I post about abortion rights. I post about drugs. I post about like. I post, I post stuff hating the left and the right equally, and and yet people who follow me on Facebook don't seem to want to report my stuff, which is great. But it does mean that there are ways to talk about offensive issues or things that are going to cause lots of controversy without actually getting kicked off Facebook. Um, but it is a real concern. It's been a problem for a lot of people. Mm. Besides that, I swear this is the only panel where I'm going to be talking about myself, so I apologize for this. But I also have 1,600 followers on Twitter, which is not that many followers. However, my 202 tweets in the last 28 days have received 53,000 impressions. And every month, I get, I average between 30 and 60,000 impressions, which means that like, like they're getting, it's getting pulled up in people's um, Twitter feeds, it's getting pulled up in search terms, it's getting pulled up by like someone retweeting something that I posted and it getting, it getting shared around. So, um, and, the, and the funny thing is, I almost never go on Twitter. Uh, that 202 tweets is literally just me uh, forwarding the stuff that I post on Facebook onto Twitter. Um, so, what, what's up, Charles? How are you doing? I'm alive. <laughs> um, uh, and then, lastly, I run a Facebook group called Not That Kind of Feminist. So this is not even a libertarian thing. But I run a Facebook group, it has 900 members. Uh, over six, uh, 600 of whom are actively have actively engaged with content in the last 28 days. I looked up all these stats last night in case you're curious. Um, it's 55% women, 40% men, 5% custom gender. In the last 28 days, we received 2,500 comments, 2,700 reactions to posts. And this is a group that I basically made because I wanted to kind of argue about feminism and talk about how like there's different there's different sects of feminism. There's different like uh, there's like the third waivers, second waivers, first waivers, libertarian feminists, and 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 and, uh, and and I actually let MRAs into the group, so it's a fun little place where everyone just fights and has a good time, um, and uh, and it has a lot of notoriety among libertarian among 
uh, feminists um, as that feminist group. So, uh, but it's been really fun because I started it on a lark. I was like, I want a group where we can like argue about feminism like with the intention of like, can we make feminism better? And it's been a really fun social experiment because it's not, like it's not me talking about libertarianism, it's me trying to like inject slightly libertarian ideas with, I have four moderators and all of us are libertarians. And the people that are in the group, some of them know that, but like we're just kind of slowly injecting libertarian solutions for feminist problems while letting everyone kind of debate it all and, and have a good time. So. Um, that, that is why, like, I guess they asked me to do this presentation, and now I'm going to stop talking about myself entirely. Um, but when we're dealing with social media, it's important not to forget the real world, because it can be hard to human when you're online. And what I mean by that is that when you're interacting with real people, uh, don't forget that you're interacting with real people, real problems, and that your ability to forward links disproving their arguments in a second doesn't have the power that buying someone a drink and talking through your disagreements face to face might. Um, because you can go on online and, and, uh, and, and go back and forth with somebody on a thread and be like, oh, I'm gonna send you all these links, and like, ha, fuck you, I beat you. But the, at the end of the day, like, that doesn't necessarily change someone's mind, it just makes you feel right. And I like to, to remind people that sometimes you'd have a much more productive time sitting and having a drink with someone at a bar and being like, let's talk about like why I want free market healthcare and you want fucking universal healthcare. And so it can be a good like thing to remember that. Um, but uh, so la a couple days ago, I reached out on Facebook asking for people um, who had success stories of things they had done on Facebook that they were uh, particularly proud of, or, or actually horror stories. So of course everyone was sending me Arvin Boros uh, Facebook uh, posts. So uh, that will be, that, that has its own section, I promise. Um, but uh, what's really neat is this particular, this one guy actually sent me this story and this is kind of like coaching people through this idea, which he said that um, tactics for your own community is remember that social media doesn't have to entirely be online. And what I mean by that is that Engaging not just, okay, you've got your libertarian community and you can engage online and then come to a conference, but you can also go, um, you can also go into your real live community or neighborhood or your town and, uh, and you can bring some of it online. And so what this guy did is, so he built a, we wrote this as like, here, here's your lesson, here's what, how you can do this. But building a good team and starting a good Facebook community group in your town. You start with five good admins that can work together as a team, uh, start a group chat to work together on building that community. It helps tremendously if the majority of said board happens to be libertarian. However, it should be diverse. There should, it should not be exclusively libertarian. And then you add a few people from the community. Uh, Chamber, Lions, Elks, Historical Society, um, every preacher from every church, every bartender in town, and anyone who's a community leader or organizer. Uh, anyone with a big mouth is basically what he said. Uh, and then you cultivate your community to uh, work to become a respected community news source. Um, and their situation, so they, their group is run by a mix of people that include libertarians. And in four years, they've probably helped their community find a thousand lost pets. God, they lose, they lose a lot of pets in that town. Um, they've, uh, they've helped every business in town advertise. They've promoted every fundraiser, every GoFundMe, somebody needs, uh, needs help you know, with, with um, a medical issue or whatever, and they sort of GoFundMe. They've had a hand in amplifying that into their community. Um, and they've started going live on the scoop with town council meetings with a libertarian perspective, but people didn't come there for the libertarian perspective. People came because it's a respected community news source that's now commenting on like, why are we spending money on this and why are we doing this? Um, so they've created value for their town and their, and their neighborhood, and so people are actually engaged and interested and not because they're libertarians. They're not. This is not you know what they're what they're leading with. They're they're bringing libertarian. They're injecting libertarian thought in, but but uh, but they're not focused on that. Um, this strategy, almost all alone, and this is what the guy told me. So I haven't double I haven't, I haven't I double checked his uh, his information, but he was able to net a libertarian candidate 28 percent of the votes as a write-in candidate for mayor of a third-class city in their state, which is Pennsylvania, in 2015. Last year, it made all the difference in unseating a 30-year incumbent, too. 
which is really like really a powerful thing to be able to do by just creating a Facebook group and spending a couple of years really getting to know your community that is offline online. And so, uh, and the town is called Monagahela, Pennsylvania. I have I, I literally had to write down the pronunciation because I was going to mess that up. Mm. So. Um, but things to know is that when you're running a grouper page, and again, this is focused mostly on Facebook, but, um, okay, I said inspire rather than offend. At the end of the day, we're libertarians, we're going to offend people, that's just what happens. Um, and, and the thing is, I don't have any problem with posting stuff that offends people. Like, I, I constantly do, and you know, we have two people on Facebook who follow me on Facebook. This crowd doesn't follow me on Facebook, it's really fun. But, um, uh, the, uh, but the thing is, I post tons of offensive stuff on Facebook, but my intention is not to post it to offend people. That's just a, a secondary thing that happens. Um, so, um, like, I'll post things about, you know, abortion rights or whatever, and I'm, I'm posting to inform people. But, of course, some of my audience gets offended. But most of the time, I'm trying to inspire people, I'm trying to interest people, I'm trying to engage people in content, and uh, and occasionally they get offended, but I'm not out there to try to offend them, and I think that's important. Um, another thing is if you're running a Facebook group for, or a, or a page for your local chapter, or, or even your own, um, or even your own personal Facebook, is to rephrase debates in creative ways. So if you're having a conversation, if you're, if you're, you know, something comes up in the news, it's always good to rephrase things, considering your audience and considering who's following you, about how, like, how can you interest somebody in a topic? Um, and one of the ones I use is, uh, is a while back there was a bunch of controversy about um, about uh, Uber surge pricing, and of course, like my friends on the left were like, "Oh, Uber's such a terrible company," and on top of that, they get the surge pricing, and they're like making people spend all this extra money just to get like home safe or whatever. And I I ended up. Uh, tackling that topic by bringing up the fact that surge pricing helps the drivers and that's helping the labor. And so, because leftists love conversations about the power of the labor and the labor unions and, and things like that. So when you start, like when I, when I, you know, I'm talking about, oh, like Uber should have the right to surge price. Like instead of talking about Uber's right to make things more expensive, I want to talk about how Uber is going to help out those drivers who show up and meet that demand. And that's helping, and that's helping the labor force. And, and and as I said, that's a good way to talk to the left. So if you're if if you know who your audience is, if you know who's following your page, and you're able to to cultivate a message that makes things interesting and makes things things engaging and friendly, instead of just being like Uber can do whatever the hell they want, I'm a libertarian. Like yeah, that's great. We we all believe that, but that doesn't necessarily sell your point. Um, also, providing content that is useful. Um, providing providing content that's like fun little stats or or like also this kind of goes together with providing content that's shareable, but um, but providing content that um, that makes people you know go oh wow I just learned something from this really quickly a you know, stat I didn't know um, you know combined with some kind of message about like about why you know liberty is important but to do it subtly with like hey here's some useful information um, and. <laughs> like, you know, less, like, deliberately useful, but actually handy um, add-in is, like, is when, when there's, uh, when there's events going on, or, um, or, like, uh, like, when Martin Luther King Day comes along, it's a really good opportunity to find your best MLK quote and, and, and put it up, or something like that, to, to engage your audience in something that's going to make them go, oh, yeah, it's MLK, I should share that, and ta-da, you got to share from your page that's usually talking about libertarianism, and then just brought in, like, a nice little quote about, judging people by the content of their character rather than the color of their skin, or whatever. Um, and the next thing is about determining what you want to convey and considering the best way to achieve that. Because there's a lot of people that don't really think about what they're trying to tell people when they're engaging on social media. Um, and uh, and I guess, I know, I know I'm getting to the Arvin section <laughs> in a minute, but it's a, it's important to recognize that you want your actions to uh, you, you want your actions to to be aligned with your intentions. If you're intending on you know if you're intending on posting things that are just gonna like 
contribute to the circle jerk of libertarianism and, and, and libertarians talking to one another and then and, and, uh, and preaching to the choir and goading people up, but that's cool. That's your intention. Like, go ahead and do that. But if your intention is educating people about libertarianism, if your if your intention is to um, to show people um, a new way of looking at an idea or a new way of looking at libertarianism, or to, to, to actually convince people of something, you want to make sure that you're not going out of your way to like to freak people out with like the most controversial positions, like shooting school boards or things like that. So, <laughs> and we're gonna get into that part of the tweet in a second. Um, oh, because light a candle and share the flame, don't blow shit up. <laughs> um, I, it's really funny, I just, I found this picture and I was like, what can I, what can I put in that, like, like, in that beautiful little image right there. But the fact is, um, is, try to inspire people, try to make people, try to make people interested in what you have to, to say and make it, and make it something that people want to share and want to engage with. Don't, don't just like scorch your things, really, it's not, it's not the way to go. Um, so, could we not? And so, I, like, people of course sent me a bunch of Arvin screenshots and said, can we talk about the fact that the vice chair of the LNC post things like bad idea school shootings, good idea school board shootings, and then on top of that, this this delightful, if a 14 year old has a kid, I'd prefer the other person be an adult with a job. Hashtag end welfare. I do really love how he loves to throw in the hashtag end welfare because that's really that that's really what people are gonna draw from that. Like I and 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 here's the thing. I understand that his intention and his actions are entirely aligned. Because I understand that Arvin's intention is to scare the shit out of moderates in the party and get them out. Because he doesn't want, like, watered down Republicans or Democrats who are here in the party. Um, you can disagree with that, or you can totally agree with that. This might not be the way to go about this. What's up, Charles? We, we just don't associate him with very real possibility he is a plant, or could we at least tell him that he is? <laughs> it would be. It would be nice. That would be, be nice. Just like say, go, go. The Republicans pay him off. Um, there's, there is always that. There's the theory that perhaps he's just trying to make us look bad. Um, he's, he's certainly not very good at making us look good. And that's the thing is that a lot of times I'm, I'm a radical libertarian. I often have plenty of agreement in principle with the guy, but that does not, that does not turn around and equate to how his messaging style is. And, and I have my own way, because I have most of my libertarian, my, most of my social media is very personal. I have a personal page. I don't, I don't run like, you know, the Los Angeles County Libertarian Group or anything like that. Um, but, you know, I have my own way of dealing with Arvin in, I like to speak radical to radicals. So, like, I remember when he posted this, is a four, if a 14 year old has a kid, I'd prefer the other person be an adult with a job. Um, I believe that my radical response to him was, if a 14-year-old is pregnant, I'm going to drive her to Planned Parenthood and encourage her to get an abortion myself. Hashtag personal responsibility. So I have my own ways of really pissing off people in response to uh, to people like him who piss people off. But um, I want to call out what Arvin does specifically because it's called the Libertarian Macho Clash. And uh, the reason that... The, this, the, I did not come up with this term, and what's actually really handy is I remember this essay when it came out in 2001. However, Brian Doherty from Reason recently posted about this, and so he reminded me of it, and so I just totally snagged this from him. But um, Arvin belongs to a long-standing tradition of libertarian in the Libertarian Party politics, known in the old days as the Libertarian Macho Flash. The idea was well characterized in 2001 essay uh, by Thomas Sipos. The macho flash is an in-your-face flaunting of the most extreme libertarian hypotheticals. No soft pot peddling or sugar cube to make the medicine go down. Should a soccer mom ask about drug policy in a hypothetical libertarian society, the non-flasher will discuss medical marijuana, the failure of prohibition, and the benefits of treatment over prison. The macho flasher will defend the right to erect, cra erect crack cocaine vending machines in daycare centers. Uh, <laughs> The admonition against macho flashing comes from what might be termed the LP's activist faction. Uh, activists are primarily concerned with electoral victory. They advocate marketing the most popular LP positions and downplaying the scary ones. 
they favor prioritization, if not compromise, of issues based on voter appeal. Now, I personally think that we should sometimes pr uh, uh, prioritize um, for for voter appeal and for and for engaging in some popular issues. Because the fact is, libertarianism is a ton of pop a ton of popular issues. We've been right on marijuana prohibition, and finally, finally, the rest of the country is coming to to like somewhere we've already been. We were right on gay marriage before any other party. Um, the fact is, like. There are tons of popular libertarian positions, and there's nothing wrong with bringing them up and being like, hey, guess what? Popular libertarian position. Like, welcome, welcome to something that everyone can agree on. But the reason for the libertarian matcha flash is basically to, to scare off people who are watering down the party, who, who don't understand the principles of the party. And I'm not necessarily advocating for that. I'm simply letting you know what that is. Because again, understanding someone's intent and their actions can be very can be very important. Um, in the meantime, I highly recommend just representing liberty well. Um, what I mean by that is, uh, because a lot of my followers are on the left and the right, um, especially on the left, a lot of my friends will message me, comment, or run into me in person and go, holy shit, the libertarians on your page are crazy. Um, <laughs> But then they'll say things like, I, like I went to my friend's birthday party recently, and she was introducing me around, and she's like, guys, this is Aubin's. She's a libertarian, and she's like the only libertarian I like. But like, she's so cool. Like, you should let talk to her about like libertarian ideas. And her friends were like, libertarian? Like, like they were they were weirded out to begin with. But then I I constantly get this comment, you're the only libertarian I like, and I feel really horrible that that's huh. the case. Because like I, I I want I want us to be better liked, but I like to think that that means I'm representing liberty well, and I'm not watering down ideas. I'm not being you know I'm not sitting there going like oh yeah like you know like incremental libertarianism. I'm very much not an incrementalist, but I still somehow manage to get the left and the right going. Oh no no I like you. Your libertarianism I can handle. Um, so that's important. Um, one of the important things to do is to know your audience, because the person that you're trying to convince isn't always the person that you're arguing with. Um, and what I mean by that is, like, if you're in a like Facebook debate with somebody, and you know you're just going back and forth in a comments thread and like throwing out links and and fighting and telling them they're a status or whatever, at the end of the day, that isn't necessarily the person you're going to convince. Because when you're up against somebody uh, having a debate, they're going to need to defend their position. They have no motivation to suddenly go, "Oh, you're totally right. Let me switch sides now." Like no one's going to do that. And so. What you have to recognize is like who's watching right now, who's you know who's lurking, who's not um, who's not commenting, but who is watching to see how you behave, how you you know do you do you just turn around and tell the person oh yeah you want to you want to like put a gun to my head and, and take my money and pay for you know like um, welfare whatever whatever the the issue is um, like. That can turn off people who are who are watching you and going, oh, like what you know, like what is this guy? Like what is what is he about? What is he you know trying to convey? And so a lot of times, if you can if you can stick to facts and you can stick to you know actually trying to honestly convince somebody of something, but realize that you don't need to convince the person that you're having the argument with because what they're going to do is they're going to take whatever you said to them and they're going to take their time like mulling that over and maybe they will never convert, maybe they'll convert in a while, maybe they'll they'll take some of those points and, and, uh, and agree with them about it, like in, in part. But there will be a bunch of people who've been watching this debate uh, unfold in maybe multiple threads who will go, oh, wow, I think I like how this person, you know, this person didn't go around, you know, calling someone an asshole. Like they, like, you know, they, they, they comported themselves well. And on top of that, they made arguments that I'm interested in. And that happens to me a lot, is I get random messages from people that I know, like when I when I met them, they were on the left or on the right, they were, you know, you know dual Democrat or Republican. And I'll get a message from them going, Ovens, I think I'm a libertarian. And it's because of your posts. And they'll usually reference the fact that I'm not, like I'm not an asshole to people who I'm arguing with on the internet. And, 
And, uh, and so that's, because that's important to recognize, is that people are going to be naturally defensive. So um, it's very rare that you're going to get someone who's going to turn around while you're having a discussion and be like, oh, you're totally right. I just, I give up my position and I walk away. Like, that doesn't happen. They go like, oh, well, you're an asshole. I'm going to block you and never talk to you again. Um, and so it's really, it's really good to, to remember that you're not, that's not necessarily your token demographic that you're trying to win over. Uh, because ideas flow between friends. And if, you, uh, and if, you're, if you're hammering somebody, it does not bring about, uh, it does not bring about their, their interest in, in listening to your ideas. It just makes them defensive against them. Um, and not attacking the people, critiquing the ideas. I have like two or three people on my Facebook who are hardcore anarchists. I love the shit out of them, and I love I love the like some of the things that they say because you know like they, they really get it. They they can really really articulate libertarian principles. But I am so tired of them popping into a thread and just stopping to just literally just call like one calling people statists. But two, because because that really works. Because you know, because if you ever like you know said so, if you're a statist, and for them to go, oh, you're totally. Right. <laughs> I am. I am a statist. Oh, like, like that doesn't even mean anything to them. They don't know what the like. They don't know what the hell they're supposed to be upset about with that that comment to begin with. And then like, what are they gonna do? Oh yeah. Wow, I'm a statist. You're absolutely right. Like I should. Um, how do I sign up for a libertarian party? You let me know if it's ever happened. Mm. But, but not attacking the ideas. But critiquing the no, not attacking the people, but critiquing the ideas. The fact is, like a lot of people really identify with their own ideas as being part of themselves. So this can be a really tricky thing to do anyway. But the fact is, is that there are way too many times that I'm having a discussion with someone and I'm moving them closer to liberty, and then somebody pops in and is like, "You're." You know, you're a you're a lying asshole because you won't admit that like the government's stealing my money and therefore like everything that you're proposing to do with government money is immoral. It's like, yeah, it we'll get there. We will get to that conversation, it's just not there yet. Um, the other thing is finding your common ground. And there is a uh, debate tactic that I like to refer to. It was a uh, developed in nineteen eighty by Ray Ray Ransberger bleh, oh my god. Ray Ransberger and um, David Nolan and it's um the Ransberger pivot. And it's actually about uh, when you're having a debate with someone, finding your common ground in order to rephrase um, the debate and kind of bring people together. So it's like you're back and forth with somebody in your head, and, like having having a discussion. And you know, you're going, "Hey, I believe in free market healthcare," and and, uh, and somebody else is like, "We need universal single payer healthcare for everyone." Woohoo! And and you're having this back and forth, and and you disagree completely, but. Um, but after your idea has been asserted, their idea has been asserted, and they're sitting there going, oh, look at this, this is this, uh, of course, I love it when, like, Democrats, for example, or people on the left, um, when, when they know I'm a libertarian, they know I'm going to be arguing for, like, free market health care, um, their favorite insult to me is that I'm a Republican, um, so I, I do love that, like, oh, oh, you're a Republican, I get it, no, I'm, I'm really not, actually, but, um, but one of the things I like to, to do in the Ransberger pivot is that once you've established what your disagreement with is with somebody, then you try to figure out what your agreement with them is. Because what your agreement probably is, just saying, is like, I want free market health care, but I also want, like, I, like, I believe that free market healthcare is going to bring better access to healthcare. It's going to bring more access. It's going to enable more people to be able to afford it because it's not going to be subsidized by government and being driven up the wall and like in, in, in costs. And so when I can talk to somebody and I can go, you want, like, I know what your goal is. You're a Democrat. You want universal single payer healthcare. And I can recognize that they just want grandma to have health insurance so she doesn't die of cancer at like, you know, at an excessively young age. Like, or, or they don't want, you know, poor children to not be able to get like medication that they need. And when, and when I can acknowledge like that's, yeah, I don't want that either. I don't want like grandparents dying on the street because they can't get, you know, medicine that they need. I don't want, you know, you know, poor children whose parents can't afford, you know, health care or health, like, or don't get, don't get health insurance for their jobs to not be able to, you know, to, to, to get really sick and die. Like, I don't want that either. We're on the same side in that we don't want people dying of diseases that can be cured or, or, or treated. So. I like to kind of remind people of that. Like, like we have the same goal, okay? We want everyone to be able to get the healthcare that they need, 
we just have a completely different way of doing it. And let's talk about why I think my idea is a little bit better. And like, and it's, and so it becomes a conversation about like, hey, we're on the same side. How do we get everyone healthcare? Because you like, because this whole universal uh, single payer thing hasn't really worked out, and this whole like Obamacare thing. Like, let's let's talk about the problems of that, and then you get to have a conversation with people where you're on the same side. You're no longer fighting back and forth. So I think that's important to recognize. The other thing is to get the fuck out of the way. Sorry, I like to swear, so I hope, like, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, but I'm not concerned that anyone's offended, but just letting you guys know, I just, I like to punctuate with the word fuck. But um, we all have people that we're better at, at to, like, talking to than others. Um, I, uh, I was thinking about this the other day because Adam Kokesh and I were chatting, and Adam Kokesh has a very different audience than me. He has very different friends than I do in, in lots of, lots of centers. And there's plenty of people that Adam Kokesh talks to that I could never talk to. I mean, I could, I could have a conversation with them, but like, I think I could convince them of anything. And, and similarly, there's other people that, um, that, like there's friends of mine that I can't imagine, you know, Adam Kokesh or, or, or other libertarian activists being able to communicate with because you just don't have the, the, the right things in common to have that rapport. Um, or, 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 you know, it's like, like one of the biggest, like, random subsets of people that follow me on Facebook are people that showed up because I have birds, I have parrots, I have five parrots at home, and I post really cute videos and pictures of my birds a lot, and I like, it's interspersed within all this libertarian propaganda that I love to share. And so, there's a bunch of people that showed up, it's like, oh my god, you have a cute bird, and you're in my, like, this Facebook group about birds, and yeah, birds, and they friend me. And then, they're, uh, they, like, suddenly they're, you know, they're connecting with me over the fact that we have birds and the birds talk or you know do the same weird habit or whatever, and then they're they're showing up on my Facebook feed and going, "Whoa, she's a crazy libertarian," but I might actually be able to talk to that person because we have this thing in common. We have this like uh, we have this like ability to to you know like converse over something that we that's completely like non political and non controversial. What what's up? Yeah, before you move on, topic, what are the names? <laughs> My five birds are Petrie, Kiwi, Cricket, Pearl, and Justice. And this is not a question for me, but it's for the audience. Um, have you trained any of them to say taxation is theft? <laughs> taxation is theft is a very complicated <coughs> phrase to get a small parrot to say. <laughs> <laughs> the effort could be there. Um, I'll work on it. Kiwi currently likes to remind me that he's a pretty birdie. Um, and then he, he, he says, pretty birdie, I'm a pretty birdie, pretty birdie kiwi, kiwi pretty birdie. And then I go, who's a pretty birdie? And he goes, kiwi! So, um, so yeah, kiwi is extremely narcissistic. Um, he also says peekaboo and a couple other things. Um, uh, but also, so talking to the left or the right does not require uh, watering down our principles. It requires speaking in the, in the language of those you're trying to reach. And I mean, I've talked about this a little bit in the previous in, in these previous slides about how um, you know sometimes it's it's about you know having that discussion about um, about say Uber and and being able to put it in uh, in terminology that people are going to understand about free about like how the free market can actually help the labor movement or whatever. Um, but the the point of the get out of the way thing is that I don't know how many times I'm having a conversation with somebody where I'm like starting to bring them over. I'm bringing them over on libertarian ideas, and they're from the left, they're from the right, or whatever. And I'm having this nice conversation, and like they're starting to see my perspective. And I don't think I'm going to convert them in that conversation. I think I'm going to convert them in you know maybe five conversations down the road. But like we're having this great conversation, and like suddenly one of my followers is like, that's not how you should be talking about this issue. This is just principle, blah, blah, blah. And they just like, they take away, like they, they, they remove all of this like, like nice, like, you know, like I've, I've, I've been like looping someone up for this. Like we're having this great conversation. Like, and then suddenly this guy is just like, like, like actually the, the, um, the, the Uber situation was a really good one because we're talking about you know surge pricing and, and you know my friends on the left are thinking about all these poor people that like that you know are, had to pay so much more to get to uh, to get home after you know being out of the bar or the club or whatever and I'm talking about hey you know surge pricing helps the drivers get more money and and uh, and incentivizes there be more drivers to meet demand so it's good for the labor market and um, 
and, and then like, so I'm having this great conversation about how that, that uh, empowers employees, even though they're you know, independent contractors, but the idea is it empowers this worker. And then someone fucking pops in and is like, Uber should be able to do whatever the fuck they want. Like, yeah, okay, like from a principal standpoint, yes, but like, get the fuck out of my way while I'm having a conversation with somebody that isn't like that. Like, uh, the same thing with regulation. I love to talk about the fact that if we were to, um, if we were to uh, reduce regulations on businesses, we would have more businesses. And if we had more businesses, we'd have more jobs. And if we had more jobs, then there would be like a labor force, and we'd have like all these job opportunities. And and people, you know, who were looking for a job would suddenly have more competition. They they would be able to uh, have the jobs competing to get the labor, and that would be beneficial to them. And so they're ha trying to have a conversation about how like. You know, there being less regulation equals more companies equals more jobs available equals like labor having power because you can negotiate a higher wage. And somebody pops in and is like, "Well, regulations are evil because God, because you know, like businesses should be able to do whatever they want. Corporate and and and, and government is evil. And regulations are evil. Yeah, it's true. But like, is that really like get out of my way while I'm having a like a stronger conversation with somebody about why this is good? Why this is good for them?" Because at the end of the day, like when you're selling anything, do you like do you just go like, oh, this is a great car, everyone should have it, or do you like, or would you go like, hey, this is a great car for your family and your needs? Like you, you like people are are, are self interested, and we're libertarians, so should, we should know that. Um, and but people are self interested, and they want to know how something benefits them or benefits their values, and so. When people are having a conversation where they're discussing someone's values and respecting them and, 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 and having this conversation with, with someone, get out of their way while they might be like speaking a language that you don't understand. Um, in the meantime, you need to remember to have fun. Um, when you're on social media, I mean by that is enjoy your taxation of stuff memes. Um, and uh, this is, this is uh, last night I just got bored and just decided to pull up on what, like some of my favorite taxation is that means, um, except the ones I couldn't find, um, uh, <laughs> such as these. Um, now the reason that I have this is, so I post a lot of taxation is that means, and these are totally, these are totally like a, a, uh, a signal to other libertarians. I mean, it's not like we're it's not like we're going to the left or the right and really convince or well, the right maybe a little bit. But like, if you if you just keep saying taxation is stuff, it's not necessarily like my my friends on the left are getting that that's how I feel about things. But like, this isn't an argument that's going to make them go like, oh yeah, taxation totally is stuff. It's just fun. But I posted enough of these memes that my friends on the left totally know that taxation is theft is a thing. In fact, some of these memes that I just said are things that friends on the, on the left have sent me to be like, oh, I thought you'd like this. Then, I was, um, the other day, this this picture of me was posted, Judd posted this picture of me, and I look like I'm crying, I'm not crying, which is literally just a light. But this random guy says, why are there tears in this picture? Now, my friend Catherine, okay, Catherine uh, is my best friend since I was six, <laughs> and Catherine is not a libertarian. Catherine is not a Republican. Catherine is somebody who pays for taxes and is totally like fine with it, whatever. And Catherine, I would, I would, I would, I would put Catherine in a in a in a left leftist like like maybe not far left, pretty far left. Because taxation is theft, that's why, was her response to why are there tears in this picture. Because that meme has now gotten so far that my friends on the left are going, this talks to because taxation is theft. Like, 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 what? like, what is that? That's awesome, right? That's this really awesome, hilarious moment where, when, like, like, when, when it's become such a good meme that, that we're having fun there. Um, all right, so the, uh, the next, uh, yeah, 11.08, I have way too much time. Um, but, uh, um, so the point that I really want to make here is like, have fun with, with uh, engaging online. Get the hell out of other people's way when they're having uh, a, a, a productive discussion online. Um, and, uh, and, and I'm totally happy to answer any questions about like, hey, I run a Facebook group and I don't know what to do about this problem, whatever. So like, we're gonna have plenty of time for some Q's and Q&A's. 
Um, the uh, the other thing that I wanted to bring bring into um, uh, into this presentation just for the hell of it is um, uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar in that. So in 2016, besides Gary Johnson uh, and, and Bill Weld, we had a bunch of people running for uh, the nomination, uh, the LP. And, uh, and, and one of them, one of the people, is the person that I worked for, uh, which was uh, John McAfee. Because I tend to be kind of radical, and I was like, hey, you know what, let's, let's just show people what crazy looks like, and it's awesome. Uh, because because John McAfee was very fun, he was very principled, and he uh, and he also uh, when it was it was an election that involved Donald Trump, I was like, you know what? Let's let's just combat like the wild crazy shit. Like like who's gonna be able to say wilder and crazier shit than Donald Trump? It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be John McAfee. But he's well, he's at it. He's gonna say things that are libertarian, so I'm cool with it. Um, and uh, my boyfriend Judd Weiss was his vice uh, presidential uh, candidate running with him. Uh, and so Judd made a series of videos. And the thing is, is that Judd and I are both social media personalities. We both have a lot of followers on social media, and we, uh, we're we constantly trying to um, engage the movement and, and make people, um, one of actually one of the things we like to do is try to make people look good. Uh, and so Judd runs around with a camera taking pictures at conferences. I have now started doing that. And in fact, if anyone wants a good picture for their social media, uh, see me after this, and I will take a picture for you. Um, because people need better photos. Uh, and I already know Jeffrey Neal's already requested my time. Um, <laughs> but, um, but, but the thing is, uh, while, while we're on that, by the way, um, if you have a selfie on your Facebook profile, like just from a basic, just like social media standpoint, your selfie from your Facebook profile um, is taken from a downward angle, just get rid of it and post it. Like, upward angles, it makes you look more attractive. Like, come on, it's good, like we should be more attractive on the internet. But that's also why Judd and I take pictures. But Judd uh, had a very, um a very particular thing he was going for on the John McAfee campaign, which he didn't he didn't throw a bunch of, uh, of ads out where we discussed complex ideas. It wasn't like, let's have a policy discussion in an ad. He was like, I want to inspire people and engage people and make people interested in what libertarians are doing. So the, um, the next slide is actually a video. I have no idea if the speakers are working, so I actually should have tested that. But the video is uh, his, uh, his ad, Vote Different. I don't know, did, has anyone seen that ad? Okay, so we got a handful of people. So um, let me see if it works. And the reason that I want to do this is one, because social media has a lot of different things. Like there's the conversations you have on social media. There's the memes you can post on Instagram because you can't have big debates on, on Instagram. Uh, there's the fact that you can find these really great um, like videos that you can make, you can make things, you make videos, you can make uh, memes, you can make whatever, and you can share them. And sometimes they inspire people. So I'm totally using Judd's thing to just make this this uh, this ending before I start doing Q and A, just to inspire the fuck out of you. That's what I'm here for. So that's not what I'm here for. Oh yay! It has sound. Good.
that is Judd's video on, on voting different, which I think is one, something we should be repurposing for the Libertarian Party in general. But also to show that there are there are totally ways to like create virality. Like that that video went semi-viral within libertarian circle. Because it was something that like it's not talking about policy, it's not like we need to cut regulations and taxation and stuff and blah blah. No, it's just talking about like we're thinking differently about things. And that can be very inspirational, and here's a bunch and here's a bunch of examples of why it is. Um, one, what's really hilarious, though, is given social media, um, a bunch of people commented on that video to be like, why is there a NASA shuttle at the end of it? Which, granted, there's a NASA shuttle at the end of it. Uh, and, and as Judd said, because that was the prettiest footage that he could find, actually. Because he wanted something of like upward mobility and things changing and like taking to the stars. And at the time, there really was, like, the SpaceX footage just stopped. So, um, so, but, but that was one of those things that immediately you just had, like, libertarians being like, well, while we're at it, you got this inspirational video. Let's talk about the fact that, that NASA sucks. Like, <laughs> great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Like, like really, you're, you're really working that point right now. So, anyway, because, because it's a social media presentation, those are my social media, so for those of you who don't follow me, go follow me. But um, besides that, um, I still have an excessive amount of time uh, to continue talking, but I don't. I, I, I want to open this up because I do not like having it. Like, I don't like to sit here and just listen to myself talk. Jeffrey Neal already has a question. What's up? Well, I mean, I, I, I'm going to make a comment for which I want you to tell me whether I'm out of line or maybe it's important. Okay. Uh, I see a lot of posts on Facebook, and a lot of times what the people are trying to say is good. But then there'll be the wrong word or misspelled. And my first thought is, do these people not know that they can edit their posts, they can make corrections? And I'm thinking maybe a lot of people don't. But and I really wonder, because maybe I'm more literate than some of the people who post, that I know that this is not the right word, or the fact that they've got 307 words in a row with no punctuation, or the commas are in the wrong place. All those things really bug the hell out of me, and I immediately put them in the category of they don't care, they're not communicating properly, they're, they're not intelligent, why should I pay attention to their posts? And I really wonder how much that, am I a line, or is this something everybody should be care of? And, and I want to give one little anecdote that I got recently from a friend of mine. That somebody at BBC had written this article and in it they said talking about Explorer X was the first to circumcise the globe. <laughs> <laughs> Very busy. Hey, Which is a ritual that was not going on penis. Um, so, you know. But so I, I'd like your feedback, your comments on on your opinions on, on that. Well, I guess not about circumcision is <laughs> <laughs> Um so I think that, I guess one, it kind of depends, because there's, there's always um, whether someone, whether the person who's making the mistake is somebody who you're, uh, you're friendly with or not. Because like sometimes I'll see somebody who's on my side say something, and I'm like, oh god, stop talking, oh god, stop talking. <laughs> and that happens. And, and there are times, we've all had that experience. Um, and those are the times that I tend to send someone a private message and be like, did you mean different word there. Um, and actually, it's funny, because sometimes people do that to me, because I'll be like typing something really fast, and then I'll like randomly realize I just you know missed a word in my, in my post. And there's the uh, there's the assholes that comment on my Facebook, they're like, well, you missed a word here. Did you mean this? And then there's the people who send me a private message. You go, hey, I think you missed a word here. Would you like to make the act? Just want to give you a heads up. Um, so there's that. Uh, when 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 your enemy does it, when the person is on the opposite side as you as you does it, um, sometimes it might just be fun to like let it stay there, make them look stupid. Um, so there, there's you know there's a little a little bit of that. Um, I mean at the end of the day, like I I definitely encounter a lot of, a lot of people with terrible communication skills online um, in terms of punctuation and spelling and all sorts of stuff. And um, I cut some people a break, and sometimes I'm in a mood and I don't. Um, but I guess it kind of depends on what you want from the interaction. So if you're trying to have a debate with somebody and they can't, they, they can't seem to like articulate even what their opinion is, then you know maybe maybe it's like you know walk away from that. Maybe it's maybe it's an opportunity to mildly mock them because sometimes you just got to. Like I'm not I'm not telling people they always have to become their best friend. Or sometimes you're gonna sometimes you're gonna mock someone. But um, uh, but I think it's definitely. Um, 
it can definitely be valuable to uh, to figure out if it's a good opportunity to just maybe maybe send someone a private message and go, hey, did you mean this? Or like, you know, I think it'd be a lot easier. My my mother, who's a very brilliant libertarian lady, um, my mother does not know how to use paragraph breaks in comments, <laughs> so it's like walls of text. Now my mother's seventy, and like I, you know, I give her a break there, but but like I'm trying to teach her that shift enter will enable her to make a paragraph break, um, and and she just doesn't like. She'll be like, no, my sentence, my my thought isn't complete, and therefore I shouldn't do a paragraph break. And I'm like, no, after like four or five lines, you should do a damn paragraph break because people aren't gonna read your your stuff. Um, so, so, uh, so it's 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 interesting because like there are just those people that like they're just not good at stuff like that. And and if you were to like you know maybe you're having a debate with someone and you and you reach out to them and you go hey like you know it might be easier to understand your argument if you do X Y or Z or you know try paragraph breaks or whatever. You might that that hand holding even if it's for somebody that you don't agree with that might be something that makes them go oh wow. Jeff's not so bad a guy. Like, you know, that was really nice of him to do that. And that and then maybe that actually softens him up to hearing about, you know, other shit that you have to say. So I don't know, there's a lot of different ways to go about it. But that's I, I try to do when I can find a way to give someone an olive branch that doesn't like totally put me like out a lot, I'll I'll often be like, here, let me just uh, help you there because you know that you know, good karma or whatever, but it just kind of it, it creates a goodwill. So anyway. Okay, um, you've you had a lot of questions, so you're going to get after it. I'm curious about your, your thoughts about troll armies. So like in the 2016 election, if you said something bad about Trump on a news story, 20 people would come out of the woodwork to call you a cunt. And uh, like I, I sometimes will go to Filipino websites and uh, in the comment section, I'll criticize Rodrigo Duterte. Um, and uh, people come out of the woodwork to call me a drug user or a drug addict. And uh, I think these are troll armies. And I just wonder, do we need a libertarian troll army? <laughs> we <laughs> already have. <laughs> what is this all we do? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's blood, right? We are a troll army. Um, you know, it's funny because um, uh, depending on what side of an issue you are on, even within the libertarian movement, you will find those troll armies, and they do exist. Um, it's actually one of the, one of the commentaries that uh, that Judd has about the McAfee campaign was that um, as soon as he and McAfee like kind of announced they were running together, um, he uh, Judd said there were a number of trolls that suddenly just came out of the woodwork and started attacking Judd like like out of the blue like on on every post that he made like it was like it was just complete attack like and so. Um, the freedom ninjas. Well, no, the freedom ninjas were not the problem in our case because, uh, like Austin, uh, Austin was was fine with with, with Joe. Like Austin didn't want to make Joe mad, but um, <laughs> but uh, but uh, but no. Uh, so, the, so Austin Peterson did did have a little little army of of of, uh, <laughs> of, um, of freedom ninjas. But no, but uh, but Judd actually called out um, some of the people in Gary Johnson's campaign because he, he actually saw a lot of that. It's just basically people being like. How dare you like question this or whatever? And, and and it was really obnoxious. So the fact is, troll armies totally exist in the libertarian movement. Um, I I don't know that like I don't know maybe I don't necessarily want our successes to be based on how uh, how many people we can get to be assholes on the internet. I mean, really like we've been trying that for like 20 years and I don't feel like it's been working. Um, so uh, but but I mean. I like I just I, I have I have a lot of fun with trolls. Actually, with with silly is um, if you were to read my Twitter bio, um, it uh, it says um, it says in my Twitter bio the troll whisperer, and uh, the reason for this is because I actually almost I almost posted I almost added this to my slides, but. Um, I get a lot of random trolls who love to come in to tell me that uh, I, I don't matter in the libertarian movement. Uh, I'm just uh, some hot, like I'm, I'm some hot girl who has no like real thoughts of my own. And I'm you know I'm a, I'm a slut. I'm a whore. I'm a whatever. Like there's all like I get I get plenty of them. Um, and then uh, and then when you add in the fact that I talk about sex work and drugs and and uh, and and, uh, and abortion rights, that just you know that's a whole other can of you know oh it's horror blah blah blah. Um, but I, but I, I have the opposite of uh, what normal people do, which is like most people you go, just ignore the trolls, don't read the comments on the articles, don't whatever. Whenever I posted, and I used to write for the Libertarian Republic, and um, 
every time that I posted a Libertarian Republic article, um, what I would do is I'd go to Libertarian Republic uh, and, uh, and Austin's page because both of them, like both places would, would share my, my article. And then I would actually go into the shares and find out who shared it and I would thank them for sharing or I would like engage in the comments on those articles on pages that I wasn't even part of because I apparently had way too much free time. Um, but it was really funny because I got a reputation for actually engaging with people that hated me um, and I, I had all these situations. This some some so I one of the like articles I went most viral for was an article called uh, 12 Reasons You're Not Getting a Libertarian Lady," and it was a commentary on the men in the movement and how sometimes they totally like when when men talk to me and go, "I can't find a libertarian girlfriend," like I I like this like they're like, "Well, because they don't exist," but like I'm like, "No, I know plenty of libertarian women were hiding from you." Um, <laughs> Like that, that's the thing. It's like I mean, I'm a chapter leader for the Ladies of Liberty Alliance in Los Angeles, and there's tons of women in the movement. We just we are we are we don't want to show up at conventions and talk to you. So um, so clearly there's some work to be done. So I made a 12 point list about why like how like how to talk to women, and it actually applies not just to libertarians but to geeks in general about like how to to get better at talking to women. Um, but uh, but. Uh, that that article caused like all sorts of like really like butt hurt dudes to be like like oh my god like this fucking slut says this shit blah, blah, blah. and like and it was ridiculous because I like I went on to somebody's page because his because his post was public and um and I just watched his comment and he said something about how like this like limousine liberal girl comes into our movement and then I was like hi I've been a li like I. Like, for Born those of you who don't know, my parents literally founded the LP Massachusetts and the LP New Hampshire. Like, I grew, I grew up in the movement. I have, like, I'm, I'm not somebody new. I've been, I've been coming to LP events for 20 plus years. And so, uh, so that was the first thing, is I was like, well, you know, if I'm new, what the hell, how long have you been here? Um, but, the, uh, but the other thing is I actually engage with him because he was, you know, saying that all these things weren't relevant. I was like, if they're not relevant to you, then clearly you have no problem getting women, and clearly this uh, this article wasn't wasn't meant for you. And then he was all like, well, I have plenty of trouble getting women. I'm like, maybe you should read the article then. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> um, and, and what's really funny is by the end of that discussion, that guy became like my biggest fan. He was like sharing everything that I had to post, and like he was like, Hobbins is so brilliant. This is so amazing. And I don't know. Like I think it was just because I had spent a little bit of time giving him attention, but uh, but it was really oh, funny. Huh? I was saying, oh, sorry, as if that was me. <laughs> it was not you. Oh my god, that guy. That guy is creepy. Um, like legitimately, legitimately, like I think he Sorry. finally like got like upset about something and blocked me. But this happens a lot. And recently, some guy came. Like, I think he was just drunk and belligerent. He showed up on my Facebook feed on a post that had nothing to do with libertarianism. It was a post about oh. the fact that I've never seen the show Friends. And I was like, I was like, it was just so weird. Like I just, I was like, you know, homeschooler, just kind of missed that. Like I never saw the show Friends. Is there anything else that you guys missed and you're the, like everyone your age had seen? And he commented on the thread to basically tell me that I was a leftist slut that like, <laughs> that like, that, and, and, and he like, he was, he's like, well, you know, like you got, you got no evidence to support your claims. I was like, my claim about what? what the fuck? Like that I've never seen Friends? Like what the hell? And it was this back book, it was 300 comments long. Oh, it was ridiculous. Oh. <laughs> and what's really funny is then he pops in, he, he tells me, well, I'm a Tom Woods libertarian, and, uh, and you know, you leftists in the way you are. I was like, again, not a leftist, what the hell? And so we were going through this like whole thing, and, and, and then he was like, well, do you believe that the income tax should be abolished? I'm like, yes. By the way, I also believe the government should be abolished. Yeah. And then he, turned, he was like, I, I'm sorry, I misread you. I, I apologize. Like, this troll who had been like 260 <laughs> comments of like, I hate your guts, you leftist cunt bitch. Like, he literally just, like, turned around and said, I can do it when I was wrong. I'm so sorry about that. Then the best part was he wandered off and Tom Woods popped into the thread to say, for what it's worth, uh, I, if I have a wing of the libertarian movement, I think that it, uh, it you know, it has, like, it's, 
it kind of, like th those people have the ability to have a, like an intelligent, coherent discussion, not just you know belligerently posting on someone's page. And I, and you know I'm, I'm hoping that the my wing of the movement respects women. So you know just sorry about that. Like I was like Tom Woods like shows up to like make, and then and then the guy deleted his thread and blocked me. But I saved it all. And, uh, it's great. I saved it all in a screenshot. So in case you ever want to know what it what, like what it looks like to, to whisper a troll, I actually shared it. Uh, so it's actually an album on my Facebook that you can find. It says "Troll Gets Smacked Down by Tom Woods." <laughs> so so there's that. Anyway, there were more questions. Sorry. I wonder if you could talk about the uh, Facebook jujitsu that has to happen sometimes. Uh, one of my favorite phrases is that the worst thing can happen to a cause not to be skillfully attacked but poorly defended. Mm. And sometimes we get people who are defending our issues terribly. Mm. How do you deal with that? Um, you know, so I mean, as I said in part of this, where it was, it was something about getting the fuck out of the way. Yeah, that's um, exactly what we Yeah, so here's the thing. is Yes, yeah, sometimes you encounter someone who is just making a terrible argument. And not you know like doing more damage to your argument, whatever. Um, I uh, like there can be a couple different ways to go about things because there, there's the thing if if someone else is on their own page and you wander in and you're like, what are you doing in my movement? Because that's happened. I've totally had that happen. Um, what I'd like to do is like especially if I'm if I'm wandering into someone else's thread, is I'd like to actually say something like, you know. You know, your mileage may vary, but like I kind of feel like, you know, this or that. I actually like I try to stay real friendly about it and I try to just kind of like I figure like they might be having a discussion with someone and that person might be like just being barraged by what I consider to be a terrible argument. Um, but uh, but like so in those moments I, I like to kind of respectfully kind of be like you know, I have a slightly different perspective on that. Like it just and and that way, the person who's being hit with it might like have a like might have an opportunity to go. You know what? I don't want to engage with this dude anymore. But she seems nice, and then come over to my page, um, which has happened a lot actually. I've gotten a lot of converts that way. Um, and and you know, there it can be it can be tricky. A lot of times, I'll be on my own feed, and someone will like. There's one guy, his name, I don't remember his name, but LD, and uh, like whenever he posts on, on stuff, I'm just like, oh god, like he's gonna start out good, he's gonna start out with principled arguments, and then he's just gonna start calling my friends status assholes who are liars because they refuse to acknowledge the data he just sent them. And since he just sent them all the data that would, would answer the question that they had, clearly they are status liars because he's given them this information before. And like they are clearly just wanting to be ignorant and they are tools of the state, they're angry, and they're, they're, they're liars. And like, and it's, he's really assigning a lot of intent to them. Um, and so in that, I, I tend to kind of go with the gentle like, so you know, for the rest of us that aren't him, uh, like, and I, I kind of do kind of like a, you know, maybe we could just cool our heels for a minute and maybe consider that, hey, this is not the best way to say it. So I have called out people for sure. Um, but I, I try to get out of the way, if I see, you know, if I see somebody talking to someone about libertarianism in a way that I is not like I like ideally how I talk about it, like you know, fiscally conservative and socially liberal, like I'm not, I mean, I'll get out of somebody's way while they do that because it's like you know what, like maybe that's the message that the person needs to hear at the time. But it's it's when it's when I'm watching them defend libertarianism badly while they're crashing and burning with the other person, which is when I try to come in and be like. I just like to give another perspective on liberty in case you need it. So that's I don't know, that's probably how I address it. If that answers you. your question. There was a question over there. Yeah, hi, my name is Gary. I'm an alternate delegate here today. <laughs> I'm new to the uh, LP uh, Libertarian Party. I, a few years ago, you would have called me a neocon. Ah. You know? uh, and one day, I heard Ron Paul speak, and I was like, Oh wait, wow. <laughs> what do you mean taxation? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And now I'm a full blown anarchist. <laughs> Nice. Uh, yeah, it didn't take long, you know. Um, I was trolling the U.S. Democratic <laughs> Socialist page the other day. Uh, I made it approximately two minutes. I went in there, I said, you sons of bitches need to realize that taxation is theft, and I blocked. They blocked me almost immediately. Probably wasn't the best way to go about my message. I wish yeah. that, you know what I'm saying, that, and it occurred to me what you're saying is right. right. If, I, if I'm going to sell this thing, if I'm going to help people, right, calling people... 
same taxation step, and you're all a bunch of statists. It didn't work out very well. Uh, and, and this has been very informative. I mean, it's, there's the thing. Sometimes you just gotta. So one of the, wow, was ages ago. Um, so a friend of mine, uh, a, a friend of mine gets a lot of trolls, and uh, and she just gets a lot of people who are assholes to her on the internet. And um, she uh, she asked me, she's like, how do you deal with them? Like, how do you like? You're so even-handed, and you're so like, no, nobody can rile me on the internet. Like you can literally, like there are literally people who will, you know, like I'll be having like a, a, a reasonable discussion and I'll be saying, and they will just be like, well you fucking like cunt, whatever. And I'll be like, whoa, like what the hell? Like, and, and, um, and but they're just trying to rile me up and it's usually like Trumpkin supporters who are mad because they don't believe we should build a wall. Trumpkin? Um, <laughs> Trumpkin, Trumpkin. Trumpkin supporters. <laughs> yeah, so they're, they're like the, the Trumpkins who are just like, well we need a wall and I'm like, I like my cheap avocados. Like, like so, you know, I, I, you know, like, here's the thing. Like, I, like, I live in Los Angeles. Like, I have a housekeeper. I have no idea what her documentation status is, and I don't give a shit. Like, and and so I, I kind of, you know, pull that out, whatever. But, um, but no, I get like a lot of people will try to rile me up, and they, they think that because because I have angry feminists here, they just think that I'm gonna like, uh, they, they just they just think that I'm gonna get really triggered, and I'm gonna be like, well, man. And, I have one rule is I don't block anyone. Uh, so I've literally never blocked anyone on Facebook. And uh, my what becomes the thing is when someone is that much of an asshole, I just work really hard to get them to block me. Uh, so <laughs> I, uh, so no, I've had, I've totally had, like there was this one guy who was just being so obnoxious and he like, and and so I just kind of, you know, just smile, like I just like, oh no, it's all good love, quite, you know, like winky face, whatever, and just send him like, you know, like just messages, like, you know, comments back and, and, uh, and, and, and something and I, um, you know, and I, I, you know, I was saying something like, you know, I'm really sorry that you can't compete with like an unskilled uh, person who barely speaks English. Like, I just, you know, like I, I totally had my like asshole on the internet. But, but a lot of times, like, I'm, I'm playful about it. I, I send a lot of winky faces. I smile, whatever. Um, but my friend asked me, how the hell do you do that? Because like that's that's exhausting. Uh, and what I've done is I have like a, I have like a Google Drive document on my Google Drive where. It's a, it's my fuck you letters, and so what I do is like somebody posts this thing and like, you know, like so I um, I I, I garnered a bit of controversy last year because I talked about the fact that like not only am I a pro-choice ad ad advocate, but I talked about the fact that I've had an abortion, and of course the trolls went nuts with that one, and so I uh, so like. Um, so this this person like really he attacked like something I really care about like he was just like well you know what sluts and whores are just fucking doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh. like and and of course I was like well if I'm such a terrible person do you really want me to breed like and so you know that's, <laughs> like I you know I I, I like to kind of you know play that up a little bit you know um, and uh, and and because he was like really anti-immigrant and, and Judd is half like half Syrian so I made some joke about how like aren't you glad I'm not having Syrian babies like you know just like I made some like ridiculous joke about that but um but the other thing that I do is I open the Google document and so like I, I look at this guy and I'm just like I just really want to tell you off so I go to the Google document and I'm just like you motherfucker blah, blah, blah. and like I write whatever the hell I really want to write I really want to I really want to like you know question his manhood or whatever the hell I want to do I get it all out and then I go, alright. Nobody else got that out. Right. Alright, I jerked that off over there. It's like a it's like um it's like a, there's something about Mary when um Ben Stiller says that or his friend says that before you go on the date with the girl you should jerk off so that you're not thinking about sex the entire time. Um, so similarly, it's like go jerk off over there on the Google Doc and then come back and be like, you know, darling, like let's have a conversation. Like and so I am I am obnoxiously smug and obnoxiously uh, like un, 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 unruffled on on Facebook and like I knew I mean I'm a pretty chill person to begin with but when I'm not the Facebook the the, uh, the, the Google Drive where I can where I can go you status pigs blah 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 like you know there's 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 a time like you, you gotta get it out like I'm not pretending they get it like some people have to scream in a pillow some people I I just I just tirade on like Google Drive. If someone ever, if that like ever gets leaked, really? oh, right. like, <laughs> if that ever gets leaked, it's gonna be like what the fuck. I, I often delete them afterwards, but like, but after a while, when I've had some time to process. But, uh, but yeah, any any. Well, wait, hold on. Eleven forty. Okay, I think we got like five more minutes. What's what's up, Jeffrey? All right, now you travel a lot. You've met a lot of people who post on your page. Yeah. 
I don't have anywhere near as much experience on Facebook, but you know, with my years of what I've been doing, I've got a lot of emails, you know, in the old days, and now Facebook and stuff like that. One of the things that I noticed is that I think a very high percentage of the people who are just total dicks on social media or emails have no balls face to face. And I just okay. wondered if you have experienced that same thing to what degree? Maybe you know, talk about that. Yeah, I mean, there was funny. Um, so I was at Anarchal. So yeah, for those of you who don't know, I, I do go to a ton of conferences. I probably hit six to twelve conferences a year. Um, and uh, and so at Anarchal Polko last year, 2017, um, there was this guy who. Um, like ages ago, like I like you know, there's the Hyde Amendment about uh, not allowing uh, federal, federal funding for abortion, um, and so there was a conversation about like school vouchers or something like that, and I made a comment about how um, uh, is there a Hyde Amendment to keep school vouchers from going towards religious schools? That was just like a, like a thing, because like to me, I'm like just get rid of like you know like public education, uh, but like. Um, so the voucher thing is not normally my thing. I belong to an organization called the Separation of School and State. Um, but I, uh, but I remember that this guy got like really upset with me and like called me a leftist because I don't believe in religion. Um, because apparently that's the next thing. Like I'm a leftist because I'm an atheist. But um, but the uh, but I remember that like we had this back and forth on my Facebook. Um, and he was he was pretty belligerent. He was pretty. He wasn't. He wasn't totally, he wasn't a total asshole, but he was very, very, like, against me, right? And then he ran into me at Anarchopolco. And, uh, and so I'm sitting there, and he comes up to me very tentatively. <laughs> and he's like, hi, um, I'm, I'm Jake. Um, we had that discussion on uh, Facebook. And I was like, what discussion? <laughs> and he was like, you thought we were remembering. And, and he was like, well, I mean, like, we... Um, we had this like argument about like uh, atheism and state money, schools, whatever. Like, and I was like, oh, oh yeah, I vaguely remember that. And he was like, well, I mean, because like I assumed that then like you believe this. Or he, I think he he thought that because of that I also believe in like uh, non discrimination laws. And I was like, no, why would you why would you think that? Why didn't you just ask me? Because no, like I'm not a, like I I believe that people should have the right to freely associate as they wish. And um, but it was really funny because I was just like, yeah, I don't remember the conversation. I'm not holding against you. Like, I am horrible at grudges, dude. Like, I'm freaking terrible at grudges, partially because of memory, but too because I just don't care. Um, but uh, but also, like, so I just, I literally was like, um, no, it's cool, man. Like, like and we had a little chat, and, and he was like, you're really cool. But I was like, yeah, I'm pretty cool. I'm, I'm actually cool. Yeah. Um, and like, by the end of it, like, he gave me a hug and like was like, can I get you? Drink. I was like, they're free, but sure. Like, um, <laughs> so, like, it, was, like it was a fun little like little thing. But I do notice that there are a lot of people who don't have the balls, and there's a lot of people that are just freaking kittens. They're just yeah. freaking kittens. Like, like I mean, I've been like watching, you know, like Mises Caucus and Audacious Caucus. By the way, I hate caucuses, so um, I actually I have my own caucus. I started. It's called the Suck My Caucus, which is I don't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, I'm not sure uh, the caucus blogger group. <laughs> caucus um, yeah, that's, that's right. That too. It's the angry feminist here. Um, but uh, but no, I. Uh, um, but it's funny because like I've watched a bunch of people who like you know have it out on Facebook, even libertarians with libertarians who are just like arguing and hate each other, or whatever. And then like we get together in a room, we're like, hey, like we're all human. Hi, I totally like you. Like you're you know, or even if you don't, like I've been watching like audacious caucus and like. And some of the these guys have this back and forth about like uh, their disagreements, but then you can read the tone because they're in person, right? And so they're just playfully teasing each other. And it's like, you guys could be playfully teasing each other on the internet. You'd have no idea because there's no tone, which is why I am the queen of using like winky faces. And people are always like, like, why do you like make some like you always have a wink face? I'm like, because I need people to understand that like I don't I don't care that much. Like I'm not gonna I'm not like trying to be like hardcore. I hate you, whatever. So yeah, I, I do find that uh, in general uh, libertarians or people they're just they're, a lot of people are kittens in person or they have no balls in person or whatever. They're just like 
like that's the thing is that social media really makes us forget that like yo know, like, we're just we're just people like and and like and it, it is handy that like on social media I can be like oh well, I got an article for you or whatever and I can pull it up and send it to somebody whereas if I'm having a discussion with somebody I'm much more likely to be like hey like you know you said that thing on online like recently and did I misunderstand that and instead of being like here's my quote like I'm screenshotting your quote and like why are you a hypocrite motherfucker like you you know what I mean? It's a, lot, it's a lot different. It's a lot different. Anyway, so anybody else? Okay. Um, one of the things that I'm doing myself, and I think you, you kind of touched on it, and maybe it's part of the reason that you don't have some of the issues, is I, I'm thinking about, am I posting this? Am I commenting? Am I saying this? Am I whatever? To, for what reason? So am I, Trying to show people I'm smart. I'm not trying to beat them over head the head and say I'm right, you know, and that kind of thing. Or am I trying to suggest, nudge, just a different idea, you know, and, and, and whatnot? And that's and I've started making it a habit of every time I go to comment, every time I go to you know post something or whatnot, of, of taking some time and. and Kind of self critiquing why I'm doing it, and that's helped quite a bit. Yeah, in not coming off wrong and not beating people over the head and, and trying to kind of steer towards just showing a little bit of light. And, you know. Yeah, I started doing a thing where I am, I like I'll see something that is just like I just like especially with fellow libertarians and what they think the LNC is supposed to do. Um, but like the, uh, there's a lot of different things where I see, I see like again, it's not just libertarians, like it's, it's you know, people, anyone online, um, that I will sometimes like see a, a post and I'll write my comment. I'll be like, well actually, because I love the well actually, but um, you know, the, the well actually, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of times I just like, I, I, I write a comment and I look at it and I look at it again and I either copy and paste it and put it in my Google Drive, um, or I uh, or I just I just go. I'm gonna go back to my page. I don't care about this anymore. Like it's just like sometimes I just needed to get it out, and I'm like, you know what? I don't need to be that day. Like I don't need to be that person that just popped into the thread to make someone else feel stupid. Like was there was there a point to that? And so. Uh, so yeah, it's, it can be really helpful to realize, like, what am I trying to do? And especially on the left, especially when dealing with, you know, the democratic socialist, okay, whatever. Oh. Like, you know, like, it's like, you know, I, I like, I actually, here's the thing, it's like, guns, right? Like, everyone's talking about guns and like, like you know, like, school shootings, terrible thing, right? We, and, and we as libertarians need to remember to, like, also do that whole, like, you know, like, my heart grieves for the families of those who've been shot, blah, 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 because instead we go, false flag, and when you do that, people go, oh, okay, those nutty libertarians. Um, but the but the other thing is that besides recognizing the humanity of that, I posted a thing the other day, because most of my friends on the left are people that when, oh, when Trump was elected, my friend, like I have friends who are like, just a matter of time before he takes all the trans people and puts them in trains right. and brings them to concentration camps. Like, I, I've never seen, a, like this is amazing, is that like my friends on the left are now preppers. And so like, <laughs> like, like I mean, like my friends on the left, and I live in Los Angeles where it's practically impossible to have a gun. And my friends in Los, like my friends in Los Angeles are like, yeah, they, they think Trump's gonna come after them, and like, and and then and there are friends of mine who like right after Trump was elected were like, can you teach me how to shoot a gun? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'd love to do that, right? So so you know the, the best thing that Trump ever did was like make my leftist yeah. friends suddenly a little more interested in liberty. Um, but that's the thing is that I've like I've taught my leftist friends how to shoot guns. I've taught I've taught them about prepping, whatever we've, we've you know, and 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 I'm not even kidding that like right after he was elected, people like were like. They're gonna come for the trans. They're gonna come for the gays. You know, like Pence is gonna put like the gays in 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 in, in, uh, in camps. Like I have friends who are married, like a gay couple who's married and have a child, and they're liter they were literally like, I think that they're gonna dissolve our marriage and take our kid. And I was like, like one that's gonna be really difficult to do. Like and two, oh I no, I don't think that's gonna be like. But you know, I can't, I can't, you know, sit there and be like, you're, you know, like if I'm just like, you're fucking crazy, that's not ever gonna happen. Like, that's, you know, that's a little, like, I mean, they think I'm fucking crazy when I say I'm gonna need my guns to take on the government someday. Like, you know, at the end of the day, like, but, but, so here's the thing is that these are people that like, literally, I would say like, of, like at least half of the people who I would put on the left 
and um, like are people that are like gun control people. Um, in my uh, it, on my Facebook feed, like these are people that were like Trump is going to come for the trans people, and then or the Jews or the whatever, and and then they're like we need to get we need to get rid of all the guns, and I um and so I I posted like so I posted like a thing I was like like I was like you know like. So many people on my feed have compared Trump to Hitler. They have compared. They've talked about you know Trump coming for the trans and the gays and whatever. And like you know I you know regardless of how I feel about like that idea and what they, and if that's if that's actually gonna happen, I don't understand. And I, I did this in a very like loving way. I was like, I don't understand why you would give somebody with that you believe could do that. Why you would give up your guns to that person? Yes. Why would, you would like? And I, and I, I say like I didn't want to. I wasn't trying to do the smarter than thou thing. I wasn't trying to be like you're a fucking idiot you're to give up man. your guns to the government that you think is going to take you. I was like, it's like how like what what are we going to do? Like if if something like that were to happen, regardless of whether or not like I think it will, like like I like you want to disarm yourself and give the guns. To them, I mean, we're talking like I have a bunch of friends who are like Black Lives Matters people, and I'm just like, like, you you want only the police who shoot people without with total immunity, without any repercussions whatsoever. You want them to be the only people with guns, like, and 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 it's like, and instead of being like you fucking idiot, I'm just like, can you help me understand why you feel that way? And then they're like, well, I mean, no, and then, like then then there's a conversation that happens where they. Where they start to go, yeah, you know, it worries me too, but you know, checks and balances. I'm like, you don't think those checks and balances are gonna like save the trans people? Whatever. But, but whatever, okay, all right, like checks and balances, okay. But then to have that conversation, to have it be a more honest conversation, and for them to see that I'm not going, I gotta like, you know, just have my shotguns because I hate the, but you know, like whatever the, their perspective is on, you know, on, on gun owners. Like I just want it to be like, I'm, I'm trying to protect you, I'm trying to protect me, I'm trying to protect us. And so it's just you know a different way to look at things. I think my time is up, but no one's kicked us out. So if anyone has any more questions, you know, feel free to whatever. But thank you all for coming.